Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are positively still in Carroll County, beautiful Hampstead. The uh, crab cakes, I'm about one and a half crab cakes down. It's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. We're giving these away. We just had a $50 winner. We put it up on Instagram and uh, on Twitter and Facebook. You can check it out. It's also brought to you by our friends at Goodwill. It is Halloween week. I'm doing a lot of shopping there as well as a lot of giving. Uh, they're in the jobs uh, market, helping people get jobs and helping them uh, get job training. Our friends at uh, Goodwill and Lisa Rusiniak met. We met through Halloween and uh, me emceeing the Halloween event with the Ravens for many, many years. I was down in Anne Arundel County, was now a casino and sports wager. We're up here at the Greenmount Station, courtesy of our friends at Window Nation as well, 86690 Nation, doing the grand opening of the Bet Parks Sports Wager. I'm calling it an emporium. Is that fair? I don't know. <laughs> hey, hey, no? well, you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> uh, I'm calling it a, uh, I, I got crab and, and beer on my breath. Chris Richards is here. He is a longtime, uh, not first time, uh, proponent of this particular program. I've been coming here for at least 15 years doing radio shows with Ravens players. We've swapped for the Bone Marrow Registry. We've oh. done charity events here. Carl Delmont was always very supportive of the things we did up here in Hampstead. But every time I come up here, I park the car. And I'm usually, like, lugging equipment in. The old days, my wife and I would be here, and we'd have this and that, and celebrities and lines and autographs and footballs and all that. And every time we come up here, I see the bowling alley, and my wife's like, feel like bowling a few, uh, few frames? And I'm like, don't have time. Got to get back to the city because I lived all the way downtown. Sometimes we're up here on winter nights on Monday after I've flown back from Bemidji. But I'm going to come into your bowling alley, and if I would have known this guy, this isn't just a bowling alley. This is a Dundalk guys that's, bowling alley. That, that's why it's I there. asked you if that's you had duck pins, and you looked at me like yeah, crazy. that's like saying, "Does Chris have beer huh? or exactly, crab cakes here?" Exactly. Right? You know, you got you got your crab cake there. You got duck pin bowling next door. You know, I'm everything I need from boat. Dundalk, I can move out here. You know, Jr. Uh, Jim Richardson, who I invited by today, he he lived in Manchester many years. Uh, he's really the reason I have WNSD. He's been my my engineer since since literally the very beginning, 1998. Sure. And uh, you know, he he might stop up here. He would call this God's country. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And he would always say, "We got room for you up in Carroll County. Yeah. Come on yeah. up here." Now he moved over to Westminster. I know you guys probably, probably consider that Frederick County up yeah, here, right? Kind of, but kind of, yeah, so. but, um, but you're bold. Alley, you have told me two or three times. You're like, I, I just wanted to save it. That's and what I, we did. Yeah. So I mean, so that how was, do you guys know each other? Look, I, why do I know you? I tell you what. I just walked in here. Um, it was actually before we just celebrated our five year anniversary with as owners, me and my wife, as the owners of the bowling alley. Um, so when I was coming up here years ago, you didn't own it. No, no. Um, no. So it was five years ago, and I just happened to walk in here uh, looking for Chris. Um, what I do for a living, I, um, I'm the executive director of the Maryland Thurman Horsemen's Association. So we're kind of like the Players Association for horse racing. What does that mean? So that's just that. It's, we're, we're basically the Players Association. There's three entities. There's Maryland Jockey Club, who owns the racetrack, and there's the, the Horsemen's Association. Uh, we're the recipients of all the, uh, the the VLT money in Maryland for the purses. So uh, we represent the owners, trainers, you know, all the workers in, in horse racing. And we also put on put on the races as well with the purses. So we manage. So were you the now. connection to the OTB happening here? Absolutely. Chris, yeah. give me a little background here because you've been here a long time. Uh, by the way, <clears throat> I ate the broil one. I know I'm not, I didn't feed it to the dog. It went in my belly. I kept a little bit of the fried one because I want to end it. With the party, you know what I mean? The crunch, you're Mr. Crazy. Broiled. <laughs> I think you're crazy. I like the broiled better, but hey, you know. I'm with you, Chris. Two against me. I haven't <laughs> met anyone that likes to fry no. other than me. What do you not like about it? Do you I, not like crunchy? Yeah, I, I like crunchy fine. I just like the broiled better. I mean, it's just. It's more Maryland. Look, and, and not only that, it's, it's uh, like I said, healthier. So right, I'm going to say something to you, me. Sure. This guy's from Gray Manor. I would go over to Ross's Crab House, okay, mm-hmm. right on the corner there. Yep. I would go to the house in Neptune. I was over at Scoozy. I had a crab cake at Scoozy. Sure. I'm going to be at Drug sure. City next Friday sure. doing this year's show at the Fountain, right? No disrespect to those guys, but this guy's got better crab cakes. I'm, I'm going to hold this up because this, this, to me, the fried part of that reminds me of my mother. Mm-hmm. And, and the only way we ever – I didn't know from – I didn't know what the hell broiled was till <laughs> I was 25. I never heard of broiled anything as a kid. It was fried. I'm from Dundalk, yeah, right? Yeah. So my mom would get the little hockey puck and mm-hmm. do it all up, put it in there. Same with my mom. That's what they did in Dundalk. And they would well, serve them dark brown, like right. like they look like chocolate so would bars. She, would you know? she deep fry them or would she pan fry Pan fry. Pan fry. Yeah. Pan fry. Yeah. Pan See, fry. this is deep fried. 
That's how I ate him as a kid. That's how I ate him as a kid. That's how you ate him as a kid growing up in Dundalk. You ate fried fried crab cakes. Well, look, we're having crab cakes, beer here, and we're doing something that you couldn't do here until literally a couple hours ago. Today's opening day. Uh, For those of you listening in, Maryland Crab Cake Tour, uh, the day after the Ravens defeated Tom Brady and uh, Tampa Bay Bucks. But, you know, you would have loved to have gotten this open last year or January. I've talked to John Martin at the Maryland Lottery and gaming and Swark and all of those things. You guys have been on our tongues all the time because John was always indicating, and the reality was, is that the MGMs, the big houses, were going to have a tremendous advantage to getting to being turnkey. You guys are literally. Is there anybody else like you? The riverboat folks down in Potomac or wherever that down in the, the Potomac River, the Bingo World. I, I don't know who runs Bingo World, but it might be two guys like you. For all I know, I've never met those folks. Know. But but doing this as Two guys from Carroll County. One of them from Dundalk, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah. but th- this was an undertaking that maybe you didn't even understand yeah, when you got into I'll it. I'll tell you what. It was a crazy idea. And let me tell you, it's, it's an interesting story. Um, actually, my counterpart, like I said, I, I run the, the Maryland Thurber. You don't mind if I eat a fried No, crab please do. Please do. Yeah, I'd rather it be broiled, but... <laughs> Uh, my counterparts <laughs> in New me. Jersey, actually the New Jersey Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association, they actually were the group that brought the court case all the way to the Supreme Court that got sports betting legalized in the whole country. And so it's been on my radar screen about 10 years. It really has been. Because the, the New Jersey guys, they did it as a way to save Monmouth Park Racetrack. That was the goal. That is what Bet Parks is? That the park, no, parks, no, 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 not Parks. Forget about Parks right okay. there. Forget about Parks. But uh, is Monmouth that Philadelphia Park, Park? That's Philadelphia okay. Park. That's Fair the enough. old okay. Philadelphia Park. Okay. Uh, Monmouth Park is in New Jersey. It's on the shore of New Jersey. So um, the New Jersey guys, they never could get slot machines at the track in New Jersey s- to save that racetrack. So what they did, it was a, it was a guy by the name of Dennis Drazen, who's big in, uh, in New Jersey. He actually owns the racetrack. So the, the, the horsemen in New Jersey actually own the racetrack. The Joe now. DeFrancis of that. Exactly. Right, okay. They own the racetrack. And their, their plan for the past 10 years was to get sports betting at Monmouth Park. And they actually took the court case all the way to the Supreme Court and got it opened up to the whole country. Well, Angelo uh, bought Rosecroft uh, trying to maybe uh, thinking we, we were trying to get. That was slots. slots. That was slots at the for, time. That was a long time ago. But, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, so the, well, this um, thing's been in the pipeline forever and ever in a day. Sports betting has. And finally, three hours ago, you got it open exactly. here in October 2022. But the New Jersey horsemen, they, in our horsemen meetings, in our regional horsemen meetings, They've been talking about this for the longest time, so it was always on my radar screen. And uh, well, horse racing was tied to slots, which was tied, you know, exactly. It, it, it exactly. was all in the same family, exactly. Right? Kind of was, um, but in New Jersey, it's a different story because they can't get slots because of the power of the uh, casinos in New Jersey in Atlantic City. They weren't going to let a little horse track get slots there, so they had to figure out a different way. So they they thought sports betting. So it was really on the lips of the New Jersey horsemen for a long time. So it's always been in the back of my head because I would always hear uh, how they were going to get sports betting legal in the country. We thought they were crazy, honestly. But they eventually got it done. I thought that about cannabis. I thought that about a whole bunch of things that, like, used to not be and are now. And then the question is, all right, if it's going to be here now and you're – People have been placing illegal bets in Carroll County and every other county as long here. As long as we've been alive. I mean, my part of this was being in sports radio back in the 90s. Sure. I would always have gamblers calling me about sure. Friday picks and picking on Vito Stellino at the paper and <laughs> sure. whatnot. Yeah. And um, the the notion that it's always been there and who, my dad would bring pool cards home from Bethlehem Steel. My dad would, too. We have little cards. Never is an inducement huh? to wager and always exactly. for points, all right? So but I was six little... years old filling out the uh, – I knew more about football than he did at How six years old. I know if we... Rice is 27 uh-huh. points less than Tulsa. Absolutely, you know? but, you know, <laughs> but that was fun. That's what we did. That's what we did as kids, you know? But I look. I don't even bet on the horses. I'm not a gambler at all, you know. So I'm. I'm in well, as a business. guy who's recently been thrown out of the locker room after not gambling the last thirty years, maybe I should have just been taking action. On maybe, the side. Hey, Flacco, maybe. how's your arm today, buddy? Maybe. You know, you feel like you're good for six this week, or you, you know, maybe. Should, uh, maybe. And, and and now I think the players with fantasy sports. Sure. You're on my fantasy team. All the illicit ish that happened with fantasy seven eight years ago. When they were scamming going on, you yeah. know, online. Yeah. And we talk about mobile coming online. I, I say this to John all the time. Mobile's a little scarier and more dangerous to me, right, as for nefarious activities, right, let alone, you know, umpires or referees being crooked that move lines and do things like that. But for your part in this, as local entrepreneurs, local business guys, 
wanting to make sure things are on the up and up. I, I'm just blown away with the OTB. I was expecting, like, fireworks and all this. It's a couple of key. It's a, it's a very, very minimal. You're laughing. So we are. Chris is laughing because so you, lost your, you lost your, your office over here. <laughs> but it is a very minimal thing sure. for all the squeeze and juice you guys put That's into yeah. getting it done. The license is so... It's like my tower for the radio mm-hmm. station. You know, it's like it's there. You don't realize it, but this is all folks are going to see is a couple of kiosks and the opportunity to to wager on darts. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. We had our first dart bet earlier today. Guy put it in a parlay, but uh, but it's about community. Look, nobody's bigger in community than Chris and I. You know, I'm on the town council right up the road. You know, sure. I'm elected to my second term, but I mean, this all the, the OTB came about as a way to save the bowling alley. I mean, my goal was when we were opening, if you remember, we opened the, the Timonium OTB. I did that in my professional capacity with MTAJ. Okay. We opened the um, – So I know Tommy. I texted with Tommy two sure. days ago over there in Nixon. I sure. was at the other Nixon last night with uh, Mark Weller and Cal Ripken. So sure. The, the well, we opened, well, we opened the Timonium OTB, and that was right around the time when the person – that it was a, it was a uh, old lady, wonderful, wonderful lady uh, named Kay Rainier, uh, big-time duck pin people – but they were getting older, and they were just – they were getting too old to take care of the bowling alley, I guess. And so you are a duck pin only house? I was the, no, no, it's, it's half and half. It's half duck pins, half ten pins. Well, I mean, I look, I'm a, my father worked at Bethlehem Steve worked at Beth, Beth Ship, you know, so I, I grew up with a duck pin ball in my hand before I could I've walk. only bowled ten pins so. one time in my life. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> one time yeah. in my life I went ten pin bowling, okay? So I'm a duck pin only guy. Yeah. I'm missing a pretty key finger, <laughs> as people would see. I missed this when I was three years That's old. That's fine. You know how many guys are missing fingers over there, but duck pin bowling. My bowlers. parents took me duck pin bowling when I was six years old. I got my first ball at East Point Mall at the Back Rack mm-hmm. Raisin, and it was, I still have it. It's green and black. It's a little tiny ball for a little tiny boy, right? Yeah. And uh, it was a little smaller than the house balls. And I bowl Highland Towners on Saturday morning uh-huh. at eight thirty with Leo Lambert no. uh, in from nineteen seventy six, seventy five, seventy six. I met my best friend in the world, Doug Bennett, who knew wow. uh, bowling every until That's I what everybody did until back I started then. chasing girls. So what everybody on did back then, they really, really did. So I mean, that was in my blood. Duck pin bowling was in my blood. Well, I live right up the road here. My son. Um, uh, he was nine years old, I guess, at the time. Uh, and he, he, look, I coached football. I, I coached, um, you know, uh, Little League Baseball. My kid never took to it, but he really took to bowling. And he actually turned into a state champion duck pin bowler. Nice. And, uh, you know, it was right at that time that the lady owning the bowling alley, she, she just had some health issues and she just couldn't do it anymore. So I had to think creatively, okay, how, how are we going to – Who's going to save Who's going to save the – because I tell you what, economically – um, anyone with half a brain looks at that, and it's a pretty expensive piece of property. It's right on Route 30, and uh, to put a bowling alley on it, you, you can't, you know, spend an astronomical amount for a, a piece of property. Nobody would put, put a, bowling a bowling alley, alley, alley on it. Just on happens that. to be there, right? So anyone smart would put a, you know, a car dealership or something like that. So I had to. I was racking my brain late at one night, and I, you know, I said, you know what? We just opened Timonium OTB. I said, well, why don't I put an OTB with it? OTB will generate some revenue. It'll because you have to have another piece of revenue to make a bowling alley successful. You know, a local bowling alley. So um, I, I, I got. It's one. not the delicious pizza and the crinkle cut fries. Well, you may not. You can't make much money. And the fountain that, surprisingly. That's fun. But, uh, so you know where they cleaned up on me at East Point Bowling was that damn Galaga machine. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> probably still there. Probably the same machine. And, and, still. Hey, it's your turn to bowl. <laughs> oh no 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 no! I'm in bonus. I'm in bonus. Hold on, hyper hyperlink hyper. Yeah, come on now. So I, I did that a lot. So what I did, I googled it, and there's one bowling alley in the. Whole I told you country. Jr. would come from huh? Manchester. Huh? I'm impressed. Man, impressed. this is a big show to get Jr. here today. You know it's an opening. No, there was one bowling alley in the whole country that had an OTB in it, and it was in uh, Los Angeles. It was north of Los Angeles, California. So I told my wife, I said, let's go out there and just take a look at Business it. Business trip to L.A.? So Got we, it, going we, on. It, was, right. it was during Breeders' Cup weekend, so me and my oh, wife flew hey. out for the Breeders' Cup. Santa Anita? And we just, uh, it was at Santa Anita. Oh, uh, there you live in. I bet you maybe. went and checked out Del Mar just for the weather. No, right? I didn't check out. That's one All place right. I haven't been. All right. But, uh, Should have. So we walked into this place, sight unseen, you know, didn't know anybody. And it was, uh, I think it was Breeders' Cup Thursday. And the, the OTB was packed. It wasn't a sole bowling, but the Breeders' or the, the little OTB that he had was packed. So I said, you know what, we might be on to something. So I, in my head, I kind of put the deal together. And I was going to put it, I was going to make an offer on the bowling alley and put the OTB over there. Um, once I started doing the math, 
the only way an OTB worked over there is if I knocked out some duck pin lanes. What? That was uh, I wasn't doing that. I mean, right. I mean that's sacrilegious. So I was not. How many lanes out. you got over there? There's twelve and twelve. So I'm not. I couldn't knock out any duck pin lanes. I'm going bowling next time. So I was. I, pretty, I do that. I was pretty depressed about it, and I just so happened to walk. I was over here. I think my wife might have came over here for the for your broiled crab cakes, but uh, I still had a piece of my fry went back. And, now and you remind me. And where we're sitting right now was a bank. It was a, it was an empty shell of where a bank used to be. So I literally peeked my head in the window and I said, you know what? That would make a better location for an OTB than it would be over there. So uh, a few days went by. I just figured out. Now you my were head. just a customer here. Yeah, yeah. And I was a customer. Okay. I used to come you over knew here. Chris and though, right? No, no. I didn't know Chris. I didn't know Chris from Adam. Didn't know him from anybody. And I just walked in the door one time and I asked for the owner. And, uh, you know, Chris came out, and he, I'm sure he looked at me like I had three heads. Um, but I kind of proposed this idea, and I said, you know, I'm kind of interested in buying the bowling alley. And I know he, uh-huh. you know, he and the, <laughs> the, the other owner of the bowling alley, they didn't get along too well. And um, Chris says he didn't have a, doesn't have a big parking lot here, and a lot of his customers would go park on the bowling alley a lot, and she would tow the customers away. So they kind of had a – you know, I, I, I don't. I wouldn't say Chris was too happy with that. Yeah, it that, wasn't a good. It wasn't a good, good relationship. relationship. So I mean, I asked Chris. I said, "Look, hey, I want to partner with you. You know, I mean, let's let's become business partners." I said, "Maybe, you know." I said, "We well, hey, you know, we just opened the Timonium OTB. I think we were just in the process of opening Boonesboro at the time." And what I said, year is this? 15, 16, like in there? We just celebrated our fifth year. <coughs> well, it would have been 2016. 17, okay. Came to me in 2016, Something probably, and like I think that. you bought the bowling alley I remember when you were building this out. I remember this yeah. was a construction project over here. Yeah. So, I mean, I floated the idea to him, and I said, Chris, I said, I don't know if this will ever happen, but, you know, hey, if we put an OTB in here, we're successful. I really think we have a chance of getting – this is before it was even legal in the whole country, yeah. you know, before Paps but even passed. I'm still a little blown away that two you know? dudes here in the middle uh, like, we just, wound up with a sports wager license. Just like, like the same type of guy. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, I said, you know, if we do an OTB, we might – you know, I'm, I've been listening to my Jersey guys for the longest time. Right. They say it's coming, and they say it's coming to the racetracks. And I said, look, we got some, you know, political connections. I kind of think we, we might be able to pull this off. And I, I'm sure You're he thought I was also in an area crazy. where there weren't trying other people wanting to yeah. do this, right? So, I mean, if you're really servicing – as I see people come in here and, you know, make bets for the weekend yeah. or whatever. I mean, you're servicing sure. something that people wanted to do. So I, I'm sure he thought I was crazy. But, uh, but you know, long story short, I bought the bowling alley. Chris and I, that was our first goal. I mean, we didn't even have a – the bowling alley didn't even have a liquor license. I've never heard of a bowling alley not, not have a liquor license. So first thing we did was get our liquor license. Then we applied for the OTB license. And Chris and I went before the town council and – a couple little old ladies called us heathens and thought we were going to have prostitutes and drugs. and But this turned out to be <laughs> Not <a> yet. <laughs> <laughs> in five it's years, we haven't yet, had any though. of that. It's not five o'clock but, yet. So uh, it's not biffs. But, but, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but, but it's turned into, I mean, look, it's, it's grown. There's a lot of horse people in this. If you look around. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something very off color and very funny because <laughs> it's Friday it's a family afternoon. show. It's a family uh, show. I know. I was but say, if you look around here. Only prostitute hears me. You know. Well, you look at all these silks. There's a lot of horse <sighs> people up here, and these are all local people that race in the area. You know, Hampstead, Manchester, Westminster, uh, Reicherstown. I mean, these are all local people. And, you know, the, the OTP's been pretty successful just, you know, as a, another venue for, for horse people. It's super cool. I mean, if you, I mean it really is. It's a, it's one great. of a kind, yeah, right? It really is. And, and I, don't, I don't know of a parallel, you know, to this. I feel that way about Tommy's place over at Nick's, too. When you're there, you feel like you're at sure. the track. You feel like you're at Vegas. You feel like you can bet the races. Yeah. The beer's great. The food's, you know, everything, everything's everything's comfortable so you know yeah i like that it's smoke free too exactly I so, do that. so i mean Better we did Vegas. that i bought the bowl my wife and i bought the bowling alley and i tell you what i mean even through covid the bowling alley has just blown up it's been my background is in advertising and marketing and well, we you were out there doing the cornhole crowd. in the middle we're doing we cornhole where you know we did cornhole during covid we had the parking lot filled with people because the bowling alley is more it's more of a community center than a bowling alley and when I told those guys, I said, look, I mean, I've got, I've got a job. I, I, I do the, the horse stuff for a living. I said, this is the community's bowling alley. And I really treat it as that. You know, we don't take any money out of the bowling alley. Every dollar that that bowling alley makes, we roll back into it on improvements. And we turn the place into a palace. I mean, just a few months ago, we installed, we're only the fifth bowling center in the whole country that has a thousand square foot video wall. I mean, it's literally a video. All right, it's I'm not, coming over and it's I'm not, gonna bowl. It's not a projection screen. I mean, it's literally a, a Las Vegas I'm not Vegas touching style. the ten pins. There, you don't. don't uh, yeah, I will you never. Stick to, you're a duck pin guy, or you're a, you're a Dundalk guy. You stick. So to you the said duck Wiseman pin. was over here, right? Wiseman was over there a couple months ago, beginning of the uh, youth bowling season. 
Uh, we invited him to come up. He met the kids and gave the kids. He was doing signing autographs. And I'm going to tell uh, my favorite story cool. to, to tell. I mean, I have. A, I have. If I ever do a book, Jr. is going to publish it. If I ever do a book, but um, send it out on a satellite. Wiseman and I grew up together. I've known Danny since 1979. Okay, great so, guy. Great so guy. We, I was 10 years old when I met Danny. We went to middle school together. Um, high school. He, he lived in Berkshire, All right. so uh, he definitely went to Drug City and got baseball mm-hmm. cards and wrestling magazines. <laughs> he was the weirdo out of everyone, and he would admit to this. All of us were duck pin bowlers. Mm-hmm. So on Saturday morning, all my dudes, Doug Bennett, Rob DeBillius, the Rommels, all my boys, we would go duck pin bowling on Saturday morning, and then Wiseman would show up Monday and, like – and he bowled 10 pins. And uh-huh. we're like, we didn't know anybody. The balls were this big. It's uh-huh. like we didn't. So probably about ninth or 10th grade, he started winning uh-huh. titles. Mm-hmm. You know, and we're like, oh, he's, <laughs> he's really good, you know. And we graduated, and he, ah oh, man, before I was through college, 88 or 89, he, mm-hmm. had, he went on that chair at Woodlawn. Yeah. He won the Woodlawn as an amateur. He walked in, walked on. <laughs> Kicked everybody's right. ass. I think he beat Marshall Holman. People I've been watching on TV my whole life. Uh, uh, Mark Roth. I mean, these incredible yeah. bowlers. Yeah. Pete Weber. Yeah. You know, Dick's old man. The whole deal. He went out and wound up with Chris Schenkel on TV <laughs> and won the whole tournament as, like, a walk-on. And he's my buddy. And then he went on tour, lived in Lake Havasu. And we've yeah. been in Friends forever. Mm-hmm. I went into sports radio in 91. This is my 31st anniversary. So... He, in 91, 92, 93, I mean, it's still on ABC every Saturday mm-hmm. afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, what's the other name? Chris Schenkel and uh, Nelson Burton Jr. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. So Danny's on the tour winning in Peoria, winning the Firestone, winning here and there. And he would come back whenever he came back and do the show. Sure. And we would knock it out, and I would always just urinate upon 10-pin bowling. <laughs> I'm like, when are you ready to duck-pin bowl me, pal? <laughs> you know, way. so we would... Uh, so I'm with you. 1996, <laughs> right before I met JR, 96, 97, we started having... Steve Hennessy was my longtime partner here. Um, he decided we should have a duck-pin bowling event. And mm-hmm. we did it in Dundalk at the Duck Pond and at, Pin, uh, at Pinland. In no Dundalk. kidding. Wow. So Pinland was owned by uh, Steve LaTrenta, okay. who owned Looney's, mm-hmm. one of the Looney's yep. entrepreneurs, right? He just Steve, sold it. Dundalk yeah. guy, right. So Steve would give us the bowling alley for charity. We'd raise money for Ed Block. We'd always do it like in March. Mm-hmm. It was always during like the ACC tournament because it was a little bit of a winter pent up. Let's get out and sure. do something, drink some beer. Uh, Squires would send pizzas. So Danny would come, and he's the biggest star in the bowling world. So this is 96, 97, 98. I've got Michael Jackson, uh, Derek Alexander, Ravens players, J. Lou during that era. Mm-hmm. They're all out bowling. Dave Johnson, the Oriole, uh, Tippy Martinez. They, yeah. We do a big celebrity thing. So Danny would come out every year, and he couldn't. He couldn't duck pin bowl worth a damn. <laughs> That's what he so said. So I would challenge That's what he him, said. That's what he and said. I would shiz talk him, and we were out there bowling, and he'd be like, you're messing up my form. You're messing up my form. It's a different game. It's a completely different game. 2000 in, uh, well, 98, I moved to White Marsh. Mm-hmm. I got the radio station in 98. I got nationally syndicated in 2000, 2001, 2002. So I'd known Danny... 20 years at that point. He's a star. He's going to the Hall of Fame. He's Hall of Fame eligible, which means he was going to be a bowling Hall of Famer. And every time we come on, he'd say, I want to take you 10-pin bowling. I'm I'm like, yeah, you do, because you want to kick my ass. You're the greatest bowler in the world. Of course you want to take me out. He's going to hustle you. I met him at the Perry Hall Brunswick Lanes with my son. I know how old. my son was like 17, 18, had a day off from school. Mm-hmm. We snuck in there at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Danny's there waving to the 12 people that are there at 1 o'clock on a Friday. Autograph and stuff. Yep. Comes down to the lanes. <laughs> He's got his oils. He's got his towels. I'm missing a finger. I'm like, just give me a house ball. You're not going to bowl with a house ball. Here, let me, let me outfit you. He's got the DW. He's got his fire shirt on, you know, crotch chop and all that. We went out. I picked up a lo- the ball that fit my finger, and I said, I'm going to bowl. With- You're not going to bowl with that. You can't bowl with that. He's trying to help me. I'm like, look, dude, this is for fun. You know, we're just going to do this uh-huh. for fun. So he starts reading the lanes and the oils and all of this nonsense. 
and I grabbed the ball and I threw five strikes. Wow. I got oh, ahead of him. I got ahead of him. Ten pin or duck pin? Ten pin. No, yeah. Really? Ten pin. I threw five strikes in a row, and I'm kicking his ass. <laughs> I'm up by like eighty pins, and he he six frame. He starts getting a pencil out, and he starts doing the math, and he just can't believe it. And now I'm like, I don't know whether to start ish talking him or not, or like back off a little bit. I beat him by like 28 pins. Wow. I wow. rolled like a 210 or something. Wow. He rolled a 1 E, whatever. Wow. And the whole time I'm beating him, I don't, <laughs> like, I didn't even know what to say. <laughs> and then we ended, and he's like, we're going to bowl two more, two more <laughs> games, right? I'm so like, I'm done. I'm done. No, no we're not. I'm done. No, I'm we're done. not. Yeah. I'm leaving. I'm dropping Paid a man. Ball. Paid a man. I'm done. And he printed it out, and he. He wasn't Jake. He was really trying to beat me at the end. Yeah, he really took over to this. I bet he so, was. So, of course, he rolled a 231 and a yeah. 247 the next couple, you know, and I rolled a 121, yeah. or, you know, <laughs> I couldn't find the side of a barn. Yeah. But he autographed it, and he loves it the most when I tell That's the story. Because there's zero embellishment. I wish there yeah. was embellishment yeah. because it, it, it was the damnedest thing I've ever yeah. done in my well, life. Well, it's crazy. When we had him over here, and, I, you know, I thought everybody knew him, but the kids we have over there in the youth league, they, I mean, because he's been gone for a little while. Yeah. And they didn't well, know him. Injured. So what injured. we did, we had, with yeah. our big video board, we literally, I went to YouTube and put the, the YouTube clips up there. And they, I mean, it was just, he was in his glory with, you know, that Danny, big such a thousand square foot screen to seeing him in the bowling alley and his his big wins on there. And the kids loved it. And he stood there for two hours signing. You're talking about a guy giving back. Every year great. he did things for young bowlers oh. and cha and charity and, and scholarship. His scholarship fund, he's done hundreds oh. of thousands of dollars. There needs to be more people like him in this world. He great great guy, supports the kids. He's phenomenal. So was, he did a he did a great job coming over. Really All right, David Chris are here. I got a Richards Richardson. I got J.R. Richardson over. All the Richardsons are here. It's like ah, the whole family that's here. Impressive. Uh, as well. We're <laughs> up at Greenmount Station. I have the last few bites. Uh, Chris was torturing me this morning. I, I text him, and he knows I'm getting it fried. He knows I was coming up. And I, I said, you know, how's crab? I really, Jones and a crab cake from Greenmount Station. You, you said, that, that jumbo lump meat looks, would you say? You said I it, said the meat's looking beautiful. Well, you tell me. <laughs> yeah, we're up here in Carroll County. So yeah. hopes for this and what this will be when it matures beyond being open four hours now. Um, What's this going to look like on a raving game day? What would this look like <laughs> in regard to maybe one day the Orioles? People would actually start betting on baseball. Lord knows they're trying to make us bet on baseball. Well, I wish we knew that because I, I have no idea what to expect. I think uh, some days we're thinking it's going to be we don't have enough parking. We don't have enough space in here for the amount of uh, traffic it's going to drive here. And then there's other days where it's like, well, what's going to happen once mobile gets here? Is it going to, you know, is the retail park going to kind of go away and not like not be anything more than basically a Kino or – or what's it going to be? We, we don't know. I, I mean, not sure. The OTB part of this and having the, the setup for this over years and then having the, the, the plague and all of that, how, how has that been? Because I would think racing begins quite early in the morning, right? I mean, you, could, you, you have tracks from all over the place here that you can wager on, right? Yeah, usually it's about uh, 12 o'clock before any post time. And that's, it's a, but it goes later into the evening in West Coast tracks and stuff, right? Yeah, West Coast. And then even like Charlestown is, a, is what, yeah. is that 6 or 7 o'clock yeah, that yeah. that starts? I always yeah. thought like with horse racing, you kind of got to be into it or want to do it or read the form to really be in here to make money. Not to wear a hat and look pretty like I do, you know, Preakness Day or whatever. And you're in the horse racing industry, sure. right? But I, 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 I think the sports part of this now... It hasn't occurred to me because I've watched so many sporting events. Every time I'm in here, there's a hockey game, a baseball game, whenever I've done shows in here a hundred times, there's always been a game on in, in any season. Um, yeah. And now you're going to have the ability to serve a crab cake right here, have a cocktail right here. Uh -huh. I, 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 I think it's going to be mind-blowing. I really do. That's what we're hoping. We hope so. We definitely hope so. Well, I'll just be here to bowl. How about that? Hey, right? we'll take you over there to bowl, too. We'd love to have you over there. Last so. thing for you, on the sure. horse racing side. Sure. Concerns. I, I, I had, um, you know, my friends over Costas. He's got yeah. – I mean, he's yeah. a major horse racing guy. Yeah. And I won't forget this for a long time because it was a weird thing. Um, Baffert and I are close, mm -hmm. right? But Bob will always come on when I text Bob. I've known yep. Bob 25 years. Uh, we actually went to a Super Bowl together, sat and wow. watched Super Bowl 36 together in San Diego. And – so I hit Bob. He comes. Up, he won the Derby a year and a half ago, and he had the winner, and he always zooms in, and he's always got the roses next to him. Like, he's always out in, in Santa Anita, out in California, sure. setting up. 
He always says to me, let me do it before I get to Baltimore. I'll do it with you Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Let me get back from Louisville and get settled, and that way you'll have it to run the whole week, and I won't be distracted. We'll just do it early. So we did it on Friday afternoon last year, mm-hmm. five, six days after the race. He's the champion. He's beautiful. It's great. He's coming to Baltimore. We're all shipping in. Good luck. Try to win again. Maybe it's a triple crown again. And then Sunday morning, I went to Costas to get a crab cake and, like, hang out. And I'm there, and he said, Baffert has just been suspended. His horse is dirty. This is 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning. And I'm like, I just talked to him, like, yesterday. I just put the piece up online. It's running on the radio. What do you mean? Uh, to have the king sort of taken down in that way, right? I mean, you represent horsemen. And when I've had Randy Moss on, when I've had... Dick Girardi and our blood brothers know Dick 40 years. When I have really inside people in the industry, they're like, the, the industry's got a doping, but has a problem, and it needs to be policed. Um, and for Baffert to be dragged into this, uh, I'm concerned. It, it concerns me. As someone that knows how important it is, knows so many people connected to it, including you sure. now, sure. and my dear friend Ross Petticord as well, but many, many people over these years – uh, you know, it's that's not good. Sure, I mean, I mean a lot of it is is perception. You know, just like you said, doping. You know, um, a lot of people think. You know, a lot of the therapeutic medications that you give horses, uh, Lasix. Well, I remember yeah. the big L you in the know. parentheses, and yeah, with um, Clem Florio, that's a horse yeah. on Lasix. It helps their lungs, and it, it really helps does. You know, and, it, and it's, it's therapeutic medication. I love Clem. And <laughs> well, just like what you said, you know, you have to have a lot of knowledge in order to really be good at horse betting and in the horse racing industry i think chris is uh you know chris has had this otb and i think the the industry still baffles him a a good bit oh yeah so a a lot of the outsiders they hear just that nobody's coming in here stealing money betting horses (laughs) there's nobody sharp enough that they're all they're cashing tickets all day there's no such thing right there literally is i I mean it's it's a tough industry to understand you know and, and it's tough to trivialize it and really narrow it down to you know, that the horse industry is, is full of dopers. Because it's not. You know, I mean, the horse, the horse, especially in Maryland, as you say, look around, you see these silks on, on the People wall. People love their horses, it's, man. They, they really, really do. I mean, no one takes care of their horses better than horsemen. They really do, especially Maryland horsemen. Uh, you know, there's a huge tradition in, Mar- in Maryland. Um, you know, one I've been of our selling that forever. I mean, I was selling that trying to get slots twenty years ago. Absolutely, to, you know, to, to save the industry here. I mean, what our industry? I mean, our biggest challenge in the in the racing industry right now are these dilapidated facilities that we have. No doubt about um, it. You know, Pimlico and the shape that Pimlico's in. We've been working, and that's one thing I've been personally working on. You know, with a group of people to you know just try to figure out that situation. You know, we thought we were close. We got hit with the pandemic, so we were hit with some challenges right now to try to get that per- project back on on track well, i have bill cole on all the time yeah, bill's a great guy yeah, Bill, and, great and, guy he's down know, in the i've seen that us. glass you know thing that's going to be a park that's going to be multi-use we've been working on that for quite a while uh the the pandemic you know just with the cost of building materials everything went through the roof with that so we have some challenges we have to get through with that so we're we're working our well, way the through whole that magna thing's been been a bit of a challenge yeah right? I, mean, I mean also being owned by a uh, a canadian canadian company uh which they, they've been partners with us they've been really good partner i mean it as you walk into rotb right on the left that's maryland jockey they're club they're a better right there. company with, with being here with you they really are because because, and that's our goal, and I've said that in, in uh, you know, to, to a lot of other people. My number, I'm a horseman through and through. I mean, my goal, like I said, just with that bowling alley, I wanted to keep that bowling alley in the community. Not running I horses wanted, there. Well, no <laughs> running horses there, but I want to, you know, I really want to enrich Maryland thoroughbred racing. And we really think by introducing sports betting, you know how many more people we're going to have come through that door? And we're hoping if they come over here to bet on the Ravens. Maybe they'll come put a, you know, put a couple bucks on the fourth at, at Laurel today. Too, they should get a well. fried crab cake too, exactly. even though he'll talk you out so, of it. So, I mean, that's really our goal to try to introduce people to horse because it's a, it's a majestic sport. It's a, you know, it's a full of tradition. It's a, it, it's a one. I don't want to have a Baltimore without a Preakness on the third. Absolutely uh, not. And and this Saturday. is this is part of how we're going to, you know, try to revitalize. I think getting the sport, the more people people you introduce the sport to the more people that understand the intricacies of the sport you fall in love with it you really do i think chris has you know grown a uh, grown an affection to horse racing just by you know i don't think he had any my wife falls in love every year we go out and see you the know? horses you know it, it, it's amazing and it, it's a huge part of the maryland's economy too that people don't under just our local economy here the farms you know that uh, you know that that uh generates so much 
economic activity to this local economy. People don't really understand that. So it's, an, it's a super important industry. And, uh, you know, we hope this sports book really enhances that. Like I said, hopefully some people can be introduced to horse racing and, you know, we can grow this and get these, uh, you know, get, get a new Pimlico, get a new Laurel. And, uh, you know, be around for another 50, 60 years. So that's Same thing here, Chris. You're still doing family nights, still doing balloon. Any of that stuff oh, still yeah. happening here? Yeah, the, the uh, magician, uh, Dave Thoman, he's here on Wednesday nights from 6 to 8. And uh, Mondays we still have uh, dust in our balloon, uh, balloon guy from 5 to 7 that's uh, – Making the balloons for the kids. and You always made and, me a raven yeah. purple hat, <laughs> ah, you know, nice. yeah. on Mondays nice. when nice. I was here. Yeah. Or a helmet sometimes, right? A little bit of everything, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think he made me a capital hockey thing one year because we were up here doing a thing. We had the Barry Trots Barry up here. Trots, yeah. Absolutely, did a little red, white, and blue. All right, uh, Chris and Dave are out here. Come see them. They have um, bet themselves a little bit uh, here. Bet Parks Sportsbook in conjunction with the Maryland Jockey Club and the OTB up here adjacent to what's still a hell of a sports bar uh, right next door about 10 feet through that wall here at Greenmount Station and Chris has been such a great partner to us at WNST all these years and uh, you know what I'm going to do just to, to think about I'm going to put in Greenmount Station and how many different football players in the eras how many different haircuts I had my <laughs> wife was like a, 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 a blonde then bald then a little curly then back then brown so we've been through all of the uh, uh, everything here, including the, hey, one day we're going to, like, handle sports bets here, and today's the day. Today's the day. Thanks today's for all the, the years, man. You got it. You're getting gray, worried about uh -huh. Things are going to be fine here. We got it. We made it here. We made it here. So so come on out and see us. We'd love to have you have you join us. Our so. friends at the Maryland Lottery uh, gave me some Raven scratch-offs to give away. I had a $50 winner here a little while ago. I put that picture up. I had a $100 winner over Costas last year. Nice, So nice. I, I like we get big winners, so it's been a big winner day. Come on up here to Carroll County. Celebrate. I, wait a week or two or three, because by then they'll have all the Christmas lights out. And that's the part <laughs> that I like, uh, going through the Christmas lights. I'm going to come back up, do a little duck pin bowling. i got to grab Wiseman before he like departs and yeah. stops being a Marylander. So yeah. usually when I talk trash about him on the air, he gets winded of it and he'll send me I hear you're talking about me again yeah, but Chris that thing and was I, 20 years ago I want a rematch Chris and I can't cover that bet though you know between you guys I'm like so. Rocky ain't gonna be no rematch yeah, we're, we're, not, no. We're, not, we're, not, we're not covering that bet over here so Wiseman, I took you out fair and square. I feel like it's a wrestling thing. It's great. Come on up here to Greenmount Station. And uh, big appreciation to our friends at Window Nation as well, 866 Nation. I got new windows back in August. One of the great things I've done, um, just especially as it's getting colder, like everything just feels better inside the place. Screens are working well. Even the squirrels like jumping up on the screens. That's another story altogether. Also, our friends uh, as, as well at Goodwill. It's Halloween week. Get out, shop. If you need a budget uh, idea for that, our friends at Goodwill are there. And, of course, the Maryland Live. Next week, uh, the Crab Cake Tour moves back to my homeland at Dundalk. We're going to be your homeland. Oh. How many times you go in Drug City in your life? Being oh, my Manor? goodness. As a kid, constantly. That's where we did three What was your favorite week, thing in there? Did you get dipping, uh, licking dots in there? Did you get gum? Did you get uh, sugar what was baby? That big sugar league? I always got the big league big chew. League got the big league chew, you know, at Drug City all the time. See, he, you're not from around. He, when I say Drug City to you, no you're thinking like, that sounds like what the ladies down the street thought you were going to have here, right? My, like my drug city indicates <laughs> like drug city. Yeah. Drug city was the it was mom and pop, five and dime, liquor store, video rental, had everything, uh, everything a dime store would have, everything. I, I, I don't. My biggest and memory. Awful parking, terrible. You yeah, kill you just parking pulled, there. My biggest memory of drug city. Okay, I was maybe. I, five years old. I It was dead of winter, 10 degrees out. I fell into the fountain at East Point Mall, soaking wet. My mother had to pull me out of this the... This was after the Penguins left, yeah, right? Ab, yeah, exactly. You know about that? No, I, I don't know about that. I don't know, but you have to tell me that story. This, it's true. There were penguins at East Point Mall when I was a little boy. Yeah. I have very f vague memories of it. One day I mentioned it on the air... People started sending me pictures. Wow. Like that's not a that's wow. a true well, story. That. Yeah, really, the penguins at the they mall? really were penguins at East Point Shopping that. Center in 1972. That's true. Like yes. live penguins. Wow. Real, wow. honest to God, wow. penguins. Wow. Well, I yes. was I was five years old. I fell in the fountain, soaking, wringing wet. You know, and my mother had to go shopping at Drug City, so she took me into the 10, 10 degrees. 10 degree weather inside of Drug City. I'm never afraid. Coldest I've ever been in my life. So that was my Get punishment. Him a hot chocolate. That was my punishment going into Drug City, dripping wet from the fountain at East Point. Mall. I'll say this again next so. week. I, you know, Drug City was a place that 
when the grown-up videos came, you know, with the little yeah. curtain. You remember that? Yeah. Not that any of us went past yeah. the curtain. I don't even know what was yeah. back there. I mean, I was barely 18. But at, at Drug City, I do remember that little part of it. But more than that, it was the place when videotapes happened, like in 90, 84, 85, mm-hmm. 86, 87, when, like, Purple Rain came out on vi- you know, on videotape. They would have 38 copies of it, yeah. and they would all be checked out. This is before Blockbuster, right? This was <laughs> uh-huh. just when it was a neighborhood thing. Yeah. And you would just stand there stalking. Did you bring Purple Rain back? Did you bring Purple Rain back? <laughs> nah, it's Raiders of the Lost Ark. I've already seen that one. And you would finally get it, and it was a dollar a day, uh-huh. $2 on new movies. Be kind rewind. I would never rewind a damn thing, so it was always 50 cents, <laughs> right? Be kind rewind. And then you would keep it. You rent it on Friday, and then you'd wind up doing something on Saturday, and then there'd be a game on Sunday, and next thing you know, on like Wednesday, you'd remember, you'd be like, oh, dude, man, it's $14 to rent uh-huh. the tape, you know? So you had to wait till it came to uh, two guys. Wait till it came to two guys, and you'd, you'd buy the, the copy of two guys. Two guys was gone by then. I don't know about that. I Tops? Don't know. You remember I Tops? I don't no? Know if I remember Tops. I remember two guys. I already name dropped Rosses uh, for you. Yeah, yeah. I played all of my Pac-Man and shot all my pool at the uh, at the billiard hall where the carpet fair was by the Kimmel Tower. Ah, uh, yeah. No, I was too, you know, I was too young for that. So. All right. So. Dundalk, <laughs> Greenmount Station. We're up here in Carroll County, mixing and matching our counties, uh, but certainly not mixing and matching sports and wagering together here. There's no TB. It's Bet Parks Sportsbook. It's a Greenmount Station. You know the way up here. Um, fried crab cake is the way to sign off. I, I saved my my last bite. You sure you don't want to bite a fried? It's great crab cake, but I got plenty. Get it broiled. <laughs> I meant to ask you this before I depart. What's your favorite thing on your menu that's not a crab cake? That if I were going to take something to go tonight, that at 7.30, 8 o'clock tonight, I'm eating it that I've never eaten here before, which is a lot of things because you have a lot of things on your menu. What's, this, what's the popular items? Uh, I don't know. Now with, uh, you know, I'm trying to eat healthier, but I, I, I like the uh, blackened salmon BLT. It's on a pretzel roll. I don't want to be healthy. I want to be bad. Well, I mean, look, the pretzel roll's not healthy, and you do have bacon on there, so... <laughs> Not so 100%. I'll get one. All right, good enough. All right, but the other, I mean, probably before that, maybe the a, a, I like the steak quesadilla. Um, yeah, I don't know. Bur- right. Burgers always good, Can't but whatever go you're in the mood for. I would not get a quesadilla here, but I'm not driving up here from Taos and not getting a fried crab cake because yeah. well, I, I know better. Crab melt. You ever try the crab melt? It's like crab cake, but it's on English muffin toasted. It's one of my favorite things in the whole world. Is a crab ah. melt. Yeah. I didn't know you did crab melts here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I would have known that, I would have gotten the crab melt with it. Well, next time there I would have gotten that broiled crab cake, that Gucci thing. Oh, God. <laughs> You're crazy. We'll end the show with that. Chris right. is here. He's been our friend for a long, long time. Come on up to Greenmount Station. Support the folks up here. It's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. I'll have some scratch-offs to give away at the Fountain at Drug City. And uh, we'll see if we can get your pants dry clean from you got 1978 it. You got dry it. You off. Got it. Back for more on WNST AM 1570, Towson, in Baltimore. Bowling, OTB, sports wagering, and crab cakes. We did it all on the crab cake tour today.